part of our job was is traffic and a, a fast car or sometimes being a, a, a fast response vehicle even though with traffic we could get there a lot faster than what beat cops could get there there's been a lot of occasions when they've called us out to knife men sort of like or people jumping so on the edge of a bridge we need to go so it was uh, there was a lot on scammon and bridge over m62 there were a lot around keyfley um just high vantage points where people can climb over and jump over so one of them was a a jumper on the bridge at, at keyfley over the bypass and he had a carving knife to his neck we've got to the scene we're going to talk him down this man had massive mental health issues so we got there we secured the scene and you get a rapport with these people you you, you speak to them on their level oh, and there's anything they need or want i have done it once where i've um challenged a knife man and he wanted me to take my vest off and my bat and belt so i took them all off to gain his trust and eventually disarmed him it was same with this one on on the bridge disarmed this lad and uh he got locked up for 136 under Mental Health Act and got taken to a place of safety. It's always good to know that year. Whether he'd have thrown himself off, I don't know. Whether he'd have cut his own throat, but he were, he were in, he were into the skin. Um, you don't feel scared in yourself, you just don't want these people to get hurt. But there's always these people that are going to jump and have jumped. There's always people that have cut the throats or the wrists. So you're on that boundary line of what, what, what you're going to do and what you're not to do. So, I can't remember how long ago it was, probably about maybe 10 years ago, they would call us to a jumper in Keefley. And there's a, there's a car park in Keefley where we've had lots of jumpers as soon as they go off and they're dead instantly. This lad went up this car park, um, the bit you drive up, and he's hanging off the edge. And he's only talking to this one Bobby. This one Bobby's got this rapport with him. And he's heavily distressed. Ever, and no one wants hope to happen. And uh, <laughs> well, we asked for supervision to come and supervision turn out. So when we get there, there's a, there's a hierarchy of what goes on. There's a, there's a we're in charge, then a sergeant comes out, an inspector comes out. So the inspector comes out and the inspector will like, this is my job, this is, I can talk this lad down, I can talk him down. He says, no, he's only having a rapport with this lad. This is not talking to No, no, I'm inspector, I'm going to talk him down. So, go, all right, all right, go. So he walks up this bit where the car goes up and gets to the top. He says, right, officer, stand down. I'm in charge now. So the officer's like, no, I've got a rapport with him. He says, don't come close, don't come close. Hello, I'm Inspector so and so. Fuck you, I jump. He <laughs> <it> jumped. <laughs> it were only about two or three stories, but when he jumped, he floor, he broke both his legs. But it was the instance when the Bobby has got the the rapport, the Bobby's got the skill, the Bobby's got the feet on the ground. Then the inspector comes out from sitting behind his desk and it would mean it like, hello, I'm inspector so and so. Fuck you, I'm off. <laughs> and he jumped. And we were all like, he's jumped, he's jumped. And then when he hit floor, he went with a right thud. It's not to laugh about him jumping, but it's to laugh about the, the lack of respect for the, the rank at the time because this man only wanted to speak with the first officer that came, but we're all stood at bottom and uh, we could see his head when he went up and we could see these two little lads talking and then we just saw his body drop down and it was, when he said it on radio and he, he felt it was, all right, we've got wrenching. Were he held to account in that inspector? No, he wasn't, because um, he, he was trying to do the best he could do at the time, but obviously we are passing it on to a higher grade. That's what we do, we, we, you get told what goes on, you pass it on to the higher grade, so to speak. That's why they earn the money. That's why if we need a force negotiator out, we've had a pursuit and it's gone through Shipley, um, chasing this car. And it was stolen in the burger of this car and I was pursuing it. And eventually the cars crashed and the individuals climbed up on top of a roof. So this has been a standoff now for like six hours. And it's just throwing the roof slates at you. Fuck you, copper. Fuck off, pig, get a real job. It's you can hit roof slates, coming past your head and smashing them floor. And this went on for hours. And the only way we could get him down well, by going and getting McDonald's. So we <laughs> went and got him a cheeseburger and chips and a strawberry milkshake, and he came down. So it caused thousands of pounds of damage, but it was sat back in a police car, slurping on his McDonald's and eating his cheeseburger. And that's how we got him down. Then he went to jail. And then he went to jail. He got a <laughs> call for a long time. With Lord's Patient Channel, 
If you want to help out, please see the link below. Thank you.